Thank you, Professor Soldier. Uh, I will skip the questions now, and uh, we will move on to the next chair. Uh, Sounds good. So, so the next talk will be given by Professor Weidong Shao, University of Texas in Arlington. So he will be talking about transfer printing for heterogeneous photonic integration. Thanks for the kind introduction. And uh, thanks, Kim, for the opportunity to uh, come here to present some of the work we're doing here. Uh, let's uh, switch the gear, talk about some of the you know, uh, process uh, involved in the integration we have been working on in the last few years. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, give us you know, people different perspective. By the way, I learned quite a lot in the conference here. Definitely it's a very worse in a, uh, you know, two days here. Uh, very impressed with all the progress. Uh, since I left uh, Siena it, almost uh, 15 years ago, <laughs> so it's definitely quite impressive. So I, I'm currently at the University of Texas Arlington. Uh, that's, typically, that's the most important slide I call in my group, postdoc, Hong Jun, and uh, uh, Deng, and uh, Xiao Chen, a few uh, PhD students here, uh, did most of the work in the group. Also, the work is in collaboration with Professor Chen Chang Ma uh, from the uh, University of Wisconsin Medicine, actually. We, uh, he introduced this transfer printing uh, to, to us, actually. We collaborated over the years uh, for many different projects. And later on, we have, of course, collaboration with John Rogers, uh, you know, who is the pioneer in this technology, and of course, uh, Chen Hui found a photonic cavity site and also some uh, current formal group. Finally, of course, uh, funding primarily from uh, government from Rangi Air Force and the uh, Army, uh, Gerard, uh, Mike Gerhard, and then NSF. So what's the vision? Okay, we talked a lot about uh, you know, material issues, kind of different functionality, different materials. You know. So of course, uh, one of the dream or vision is looking for a, a multi-material heterogeneous integration. So the vision here is laid out in one of the recent review paper put together with uh, Brian um, Cobalt from uh, you know, uh, York. Uh, the idea here is you know, can we, instead of transfer individual dyes, we transfer the functional layers in this case. In other words, we release the nano Thin film, the functional layer, typically you know, could be a few hundred nanometers, could be a few microns from the substrate, and the transfer onto the you know, uh, final device area. And then we do this uh, multiple runs in a different material, so we can co exist less different materials on the same plane, or we can heter vertically stack them, so we can do many different options in a sense. Okay, that's kind of a dream uh, or wish list in a sense. So the two points I highlighted here is really we're looking for thin films, okay, re release, more like a pick and place, but a plus thin film. And secondly, we're looking for multiple material integration on the same plane or stack vertically. So here's the outline uh, of the, progress we made over the years, including mostly from some other groups, and specifically on the you know, integrated photonic side from my group here. And I look into then finally the, you know, some of the relevance to the you know, integrated photonics and then look into what's the promise and the challenges. So what's the transfer printing? Uh, started with this uh, you know, simple uh, structure here. I try to give a definition. It really involves synthesis, release, transfer, and the printing of functional nanomembranes. Basically, we're talking about a very thin, crystalline thin films and other organic and inorganic films from native substrate to foreign substrate for heterogeneous integration of dissimilar materials. Okay? So here shows the schematic as, uh, process. So starting this example of SOI, uh, we have this functional layer on top with a, a box layer in between. And this box layer it can serve as a so-called sacrificial layer. If we immerse this structure into some kind of solution, we can actually you know, suspend or release this top layer here. I call this a kind of nanomembrane synthesis process using uh, basically epitaxial liftoff. And then once this is done, so the membrane is sitting on top of a native substrate, then we use a so-called uh, uh, PDMS or some kind of elastomeric uh, polymer stems to pick up this film from the substrate. And then we transfer onto a foreign substrate by carrying this membrane uh, on the, in the stem. And finally, of course, you release to finally form this uh, new time material where you know, the crystalline structures uh, being printed on the uh, new host substrate. 
So two aspects I want to highlight. One is how it works, the mechanics. Actually, of course, uh, John Rogers, as I mentioned, is one of the pioneers. You know, he published, the, uh, discussed this principle in one of the uh, early works in 2006. So the idea here is you involve uh, three interfaces. You have a PDM stem. You have a device layer. In this case, could it be silicon function or some other you know, materials. And they have a substrate. You have a two kind of interface, uh, viscoelastic elastic interface here, which has a you know, rate dependent uh, adhesive force or the G factor here. And then another one, is, of course, is the elastic elastic interface with a constant uh, you know, value. So if I control the speed, so for example, you can you know, peel, uh, you know, and pick up slowly, uh, sorry, quickly, so you can pick up the membrane in this region. And then you uh, print slowly, so you can get in this region, you can release the membrane. So that's the you know, basic uh, you know, principle of the printing uh, uh, process here. And another aspect is this uh, thin film we call nanomembrane. Essentially, it's nothing but you know, crystalline thin film materials. In this case, uh, it has some kind of unique properties, especially, OK, uh, come from also her Rogers review paper and also uh, Max Lagali uh, from Wisconsin. They discussed this kind of uh, different kind of aspect, uh, mechanical properties here. Uh, the ultra thin nanomembrane formation here in this, you know, have a drastically different mechanical properties. In this case, you can have extremely low uh, you know, flexural rigidity, uh, rigid, rigidities for extremely low energy release rate. And those combination here, from this bulk to this thin film, leads to an array of good advantage for bonding in this case. Because of a very conformal film bonding, uh, increased tension, reduced thermal uh, delamination, and also you can have this direct and hydrophobic bonding and they, of course, we can do multi-layer or low temperature bonding here. So all these kind of uh, advantages associated with the same film here. So that's again, John Roger summarized here. Then the membrane conformally bound robustly to near any substrate, thereby enables them to be uh, stacked onto another or onto foreign host to yield unusual heterogeneous system that cannot be achieved with wafer bonding technologies or by epitaxy. So that's kind of uh, I said. So now we can have a way to have different crystallized materials be able to integrate together without the constraint of lattice mismatches issues or uh, growth issues or some other in the wave of bonding process here. So that's kind of uh, basic principles. I try to summarize the uh, uh, features here. Uh, I kind of highlight it. One is, of course, this membrane can be transferable for heterogeneous integration. So if you come over the years, we looked into the transfer between quantum wave structures, 3-5, onto silicon structures, or silicon onto galmasonite, or silicon onto glass, basically anything to anything, in a sense. And of course, can be do 3D integration. In a sense, it can do multi-layer stacking here. For example, that's kind of laser structure we uh, demonstrated where you have a Vixel kind of structure. You have uh, two uh, mirrors uh, with a gay media sandwiched in between with a two-layer transfer process. And the John Roger demonstrated even more layers. You can kind of stack multi-layer together here. And this also is kind of conformal. You can do flexible substrate, or you can put anything, like in this case, John Roger put this to the heart, essentially, for bio-integrated photonics uh, devices here. And finally, of course, it's a stretchable. Also, you can control a strain. You can do strain engineering. You can do lots of bendable devices. For example, you can make a conformal eye. You can make this flexible electronic device with a high speed. Or you can coexist a silicon germanium or put different kind of different shapes uh, beyond the two planar structures. So that's just a quick slide that shows the progress made by Professor Jack Ma in Wisconsin, the speed improvement in the flexible electronics down from you know, below gigahertz to you know, uh, quite a few, even tens of gigahertz uh, regime for flexible electronics. And, uh, and in our group, we looked on different aspects of the 3.5 material transfer printing for photonic integration, looking into kind of, kind of uh, frame assisted process to get a, in the mechanical uh, strengths for transfer the 3.5 material, also looking for like, contact issue at the low temperature process for flexible electronics electronics in the flexible LEDs and the detectors, so on and so forth. And finally, of course, uh, if we look at uh, in a, uh, in a commercialization effort, actually, indeed, uh, John Roger involved two companies already, uh, Semperis and uh, Excel Print uh, in York, also look into uh, solar cells or displays, different kind of process. You can do this kind of parallel uh, pick and place process for a large amount of devices. So, like, you, I guess the uh, accuracy now, they talk about is 1.5 micron uh, in terms of alignment. 
So let's kind of overview about the technology uh, the status. So I look into quickly into the research in my group uh, on this uh, heterogeneous integrated photonic devices, and especially lasers. So the general vision we are looking at here is you know, whether it's a 2D in-plane integration or vertical 3D integration, we are trying to have different functions together there. So again, just to you know, a recap, so the, the one we discussed earlier uh, for this transfer printing for specifically for integrated photonics, the number one, I could, a few features is multi-material integration here. You can have different materials. For example, you can put this uh, silicon memory, you can put another union phosphide, another any material, right? Wavelight modulator detectors, okay? Uh, also, the second one is the substrate can be reused. So you can either do multi-layer epitaxial liftoff, or you can you know, really do a, you know, a really a layer single layer and then reuse the substrate. So you can reuse the host substrate in this case. The third feature I highlight here is multi-layer integration I mentioned earlier. You can do this uh, novel de laser devices or you can auto plane integration on this case here. And then the fourth feature is multi-platform integration you can onto any substrate. You know, into not only silicon, it can be the flexible substrate, glass, you know, uh, any, any type of material uh, substrate can be hosted, even papers or plastic, as well as like, you know, even a piece of leaf, probably. You know. And finally, the oral process is the as compatible. It's low temperature, it can be scalable and cost effective. So this um, busy slide highlight the research in my group. You know, so uh, I, I think, you know, okay, we, Primarily focus a platform called photonic crystal cavities. Essentially, I guess uh, we are working. This is kind of another photonic platform uh, to manipulate light. You know. And we use this heterogeneous integration process for different kind of device demonstration here. So, like different devices we demonstrated so far is okay, memory lasers. In this case, for example, is a, a vertical, uh, vertical kind of structures. Except we use a single layer photonic crystal mirror as a, a D, replace the DBR on the top and the bottom to place the, put this on the SY platform. And recently we. Made another device called a photonic crystal surface emitting laser, basically just simply design a SOI cavity and put a 3.5 on top, also you can have surface emitting devices. And we work on the high Q filters for modulators, other devices, kind of less effort here. Also some kind of critical coupling for total absorption, graphing, and uh, uh, recently we're looking for multi-material integration for the multi-band imager project, for example, for focal plane rays, for silica and in gas integration here. And finally, different kind of sensor uh, structures uh, where everything we do here is a surface normal. It's a free space coupled devices here. The uh, uh, ultimate uh, uh, objective is for integrated photonics, for course, for 3D integration, and for biophotonics, uh, including uh, you know, microfluidics uh, 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 for sensing imaging, as well as, of course, uh, modified you know, imaging devices. So it's quite busy. So one quick slide on the principles of the photonic crystal cavities, uh, I call the final resonance of in photonic crystals. So we work on silicon or nitride, LP60 nitride here, different platforms. Primarily 2D photonic crystal is the primary device we're working on. We are also working on the one-dimensional grating structure, so 1D photonic crystal cavity here. So the three features I just highlighted, one is you can achieve, ideally, even the Q, okay, that's a surface normal here, by, by simply control, uh, you know, in this case, kind of uh, coupled by layer PC cavity by control separation and the, the lattice offset. Or you can get 100% absorption by using the enhanced absorption or using the so-called critical coupling principle. I will show you an example here. And finally, you can make a mirror out of it, get a really you know, equal or better than the DBR in terms of broadband reflection and, and the high reflectivity across the band. So that's kind of a very attractive uh, platform. Uh, just you know, quickly, I guess, you know, probably quick slide just, just catch, you know, I don't want to uh, check too long here. Uh, optical parameter device, I mentioned, replace the DBR you know, with the you know, uh, photonic cruise cavity with the transfer printing work. And, and that's, that's kind of uh, two uh, structures. Here shows some of the devices made, the quantum will be uh, released, transferred onto the uh, bottom mirror region here. That's kind of reach, we can do kind of multiple uh, disk transfer in parallel. And uh, in fact, the paper was published in the Nature 2012, and uh, they called this uh, a review, it's called a rubber stamp for silicon photonics. So it seems, and of course, there are another related work, uh, uh, Baron Corbord uh, from uh, York, looking to this uh, AG emitting laser transfer as well in the same issue. So that's kind of review, talk about this uh, transfer printing process for uh, silicon photonics. And I talked about this membrane uh, in a laser you know, based on photonic cruise cavity effect here. Again, it's kind of a simple structure. You can get a, you know, a single mode, uh, you know, uh, potentially very high power as well. Uh, we have some project uh, work on this now. 
uh, the second one is the high Q structures quickly, okay, the like key point here by using a multi-layer printing process, we can basically you know, make a multi-layer e-beam pattern structures, etching the first one and transfer the membrane on top, then do another etching, use a, a, an alignment process to control the offset between two layers for the like high Q uh, demonstration here. And also, finally, the like graphene, uh, we can do the PDMS transfer for, for the uh, graphene onto the ca silicon cavity. In this case, the silicon cavity being transferred on glass first, and then it transfer the gra graphene on top. So it's a two-step transfer print process. So here, experimentally, we demonstrated close to 100%, 85% absorption from monolayer graphene. And typically, it's 2.3% only. So that's kind of lots of potentials for uh, different new material integration or uh, light matter interaction here. And, and this is talk about like, you know, sensors, uh, like multiple imagers, where we uh, you know, develop a process to do alignment as well as a multi-array integration. For example, in this case, a silica in gas. In this case, we demonstrate like uh, you know, four by four or you know, uh, eight by eight, uh, eight by four in a sense, depending on how many pixels you count here. Uh, multi-band imaging devices uh, uh, also here. And uh, this can be built on silica or can do on flexible substrate as well. Okay, finally, I guess, uh, looking to the like, relevance uh, on this integrated photonics. So uh, I see uh, in terms of M photonics in general, I see their potentials in terms of develop this kind of uh, material synthesis or integration uh, process uh, to be uh, complementary to what has been pursued in terms of design, fabrication, assembly, and testing, so that we can have a kind of different material platforms or even in a different kind of uh, configuration. Once the finished the device fabrication can be do the integration here. So that's kind of uh, challenges I see in terms of the uh, uh, issues in, uh, in uh, integrated photonics, in terms of the material diversity, in the different cavities, diff implant vertical integration, energy efficiency, and the thermal management packaging. And I believe that uh, transfer printing could be a solution here uh, to address these kind of issues here. I uh, already in, uh, uh, summarized in the previous talks here. So in my lab, uh, we recently acquired a uh, uh, printing tool. You know, everything we've done so far has been by hand. In fact, all the devices demonstrated rely on whoever has a good hands to do the printing process. You know. uh, but in, in order to be able to more you know, really you know, scalable and manufacturable, so we actually get with the support from Army Research Office, we acquired this tool already in our lab. It has been set up already. And uh, the idea here is basically transfer this hand motion into really controllable manufacturable motion here. So this is kind of fully 24-7 manufacturing tool here. And what we try to do here, we try to custom design some of the printing head, uh, some kind of process development to look into can we do some uh, kind of printing process on this tool. And indeed, that's kind of some kind of preliminary result you can see. For example, we can transfer multiple pieces of devices in parallel, depending on the stamp design, and uh, you can see the, the quality is pretty uh, good. This holes basically is utilized for release of you know, uh, sacrificial here. You know. um, we can have a different pattern of design for the release holes. And the device also is capable for fiber alignment. You know, that's kind of very standard for fiber packaging. We will work on some kind of implant. We've got a coupling, for example. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, you know, I guess they claim definitely in, in order of 100 nanometer range resolution, as somebody talked about uh, uh, accuracy. And it's a kind of six dimensional X, Y, Z plus three angle control. So it's a very powerful tool. Uh, we are working on some kind of uh, integrated uh, uh, fiber waveguide structures here. And I listed here some issues on the materials, uh, looking to uh, release the material, handle the material, and the material surface preparation and the etching, as well as the etching selectivity in some of the three, five materials uh, where could be issue. We're looking for some material uh, uh, etching selective process for, for release of the uh, you know, heterostructure on top, and also the handling material is an issue. On the printing, uh, the stamp itself, we're looking for issues related to the hanging, the force control, and also how to do the self-cleaning to like, for, like, for a repeatable process here. And the process itself, we call, of course, uh, alignment issues, uh, feedback process, process control, yield, throughput, these kind of things. Reliability on the interface quality, bonding of 300, these kind of things we, we haven't looked at. I guess maybe you know, John's company already started looking into these kind of issues already. And uh, finally, the like system level kind of things, uh, looking into on-chip integration and manufacturing process in, uh, capability. So here's my conclusion. I say transfer printing uh, can be a powerful process for heterogeneous integration of photonics on chip. Uh, transfer printing is suitable for uh, integration of uh, multiple materials on the same platform at multiple levels of integration. And it's transitioning from lab to uh, industrial applications. 
And of course, there are many challenges to remain and dissolve research, especially related to integrated photonics uh, in the areas. Uh, thank you. Yeah.